All right, MySQL learners. In this video, we're going to see MySQL database installation on Linux. So what you're seeing is basically MySQL documentation showing all these different installation guides like Windows and Mac and so on. So we are interested in Linux installation or basically MySQL installation on Linux. And there's a couple of guides actually. So this one is basically installing generic binary. We're going to skip that and go here. And even within installing MySQL on Linux, there's a bunch of guides. So the recommended method of installation is using RPM packages from Oracle. But we're going to use this MySQL YUM repository based installation and it's actually quite straightforward. So for this installation, um, we need to go to mysql.com and downloads. And we are downloading the community edition and go to yum repository. As you know, the instance that we created has RHEL 8, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 running on it. And so we need to download this RPM, but then we need to download the RPM on the instance itself, the one that we created. So let's actually log into the instance. So I'm going to use SSH and I'm going to use my private key and log in as EC2 user, which is the default user and basically get the public IP of my instance. Then we log in and we switch to root. Okay. So one thing that we need for downloading this RPM to this Linux instance is wget package. So let's go ahead and install that first. All right, so now that wget is installed, we need to download the RPM that we just saw. So to get the link of this RPM, we need to go into this download and we have to right click here and copy the link. And if you're installing on a different OS, uh, you need to click on the appropriate button. Okay, so we got the link and let's just go ahead and paste that link over here like wget and the link and that command downloads this package. Now we are going to use an rpm command to install this package. So this package as I mentioned before is going to add this mysql yum repo to your local system repo list. With Red Hat Enterprise Linux installation, you get like a MySQL module by default. So let's disable that one. If you don't disable it, then this will interfere with our MySQL installation. So let's go ahead and disable it using this command. And don't worry about writing these commands. I will put a link to my Git repo with all these commands. In the description so all these have been disabled now let's go ahead and install mysql community server edition using yum install mysql community server and let's put the minus y in there just to go ahead and accept all the prompts and that's installing all these packages. All right, so MySQL has been installed. Let's go ahead and start the MySQL database using systemctl command. And let's check the status. So now our MySQL database is up and running. Okay, so the log file of this MySQL database software is under 
var log and then if you grip temp from this log file you will get the temporary password for root user and you can use that to log into the mysql database and how do you log in you use this command mysql minus u that's going to be root and minus p is for password based login and then we're logging into mysql database so let's use this password and see if it logs in and we are in and if you run any command at this point mysql is going to ask you to reset the password using alter user statement we can do this in a different way so there is a executable called mysql admin and this is the command for it mysql admin minus u and the username and minus p password we are going to reset the password of root user and let's provide the the current password which is this temporary password first and let's provide the new password now all right the password has been accepted now let me try to log in with this new password using the previous command mysql minus u root and minus p mysql let me put the password i said just now we are in so let's go ahead and run a simple show databases command which shows all the default databases that come as part of the installation. So one more thing that we need to do to complete the installation is to load a time zone file, a time zone table as shown here. So if I do a select star, which is basically a SQL query to read from this table, you can see that the table is empty right now. So let's exit out and run another command to load time zone related data so and this is the command and let's go ahead and run it and i'm going to go ahead and put my password and that loads a bunch of data you can ignore all these warnings let's go back to our mysql database so if you do a select star from mysql.timezone again it shows a bunch of data so now you're good and that completes the mysql database installation